Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're getting to build the Class 80. Now this is a Class 80 R2 that was sent out to me by MM Studio um, in exchange for my building and reviewing this keyboard. I gotta say it was a, it was kind of a journey to get here because uh, it all started with somebody asking me what this keyboard was that was being used in certain ads and I started going around the rabbit hole. And I found that this keyboard had originally been a Group I, but now they did an R2 and they have N stock. So um, my particular unit is a B stock, but I have taken a look at it. I've already taken it out of the case. It comes in a really nice um, big uh, carrying case, but it is extremely solid. It is so nicely designed. It has that, it has a beautiful retro color. I mean, it's. It's basically the same color as the body of a Commodore 64 or an Apple IIe um, it, or an IBM. But somebody had asked me what that keyboard was, and so I went through and finally was able to find that it was a Class R2, and then that's why I ended up reaching out. So it does have the little panel indicator up here, like the old IBM 5150 keyboards, um, and it does come with and a palm plate here are the foams and uh, today I'm just going to build it stock and see how it sounds stock then I'll come back um, I've got a whole list of keyboards that um, folks have requested that I do foamless builds um, I'm going to do some interesting ones some with clicky switches and aluminum keyboards but I'll definitely be coming back to this one and doing a couple of different combinations so that we can hear the different sounds that can come out of this thing because it's uh it's it's quite interesting i don't know if this is the one that has the solenoid in it or not but find out when i get into it all right it does have a little um content card and one of the items is buzzer and solenoid so um accessories kit keyboard carrying case the pcb the plate the fc controller badge of oh, the the light indicator weight and top and bottom case so it looks like the weight's already installed although i do know that this can be removed but i think every color has a different um design but i i mean the, the attention to detail on this is amazing um oh there's a switch here i didn't even see that before so that's probably to turn on and off the solenoid, I'm gonna guess. So, um, having recently reviewed uh, the 8-bit PC, this is, this is more of what I'm looking for. I do believe we have all the items that we need, um, except perhaps some We'll need some screw and stabilizers there. So we've got a 7U. I just had to make sure that the kit I found has that. I'm going to set everything else a little off to the side so kind of focus what we're working on here. <clears throat> All right, I'm just going to loop up the stabilizer wires real quick. All right, now that we've got the stabilizers built, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the PCB so that we can set it aside and then build out the case and put everything back together. I do believe that this right here is for the ribbon cable of this to go through and get attached to the connector down at the bottom. I'm not yet sure what these two connectors go to. I'm guessing one's probably the daughter board, yeah. And the other one could be the, um, the buzzer, the solenoid, I mean. All right, so, oh, or it could, well, here's another 
Oh, that's actually... I guess that might be a spare daughter board, or it might be the daughter board, and this is the swan on it. So we'll have to figure it out, but that's when we get there. Um, we can see that we have... Looks like we have stepped caps lock as an option. To sing in bottom row is the only option. Um, yeah, I think that's the only... Uh, different layout that we can do is for step caps lock I'm a big uh, fan of step caps lock and of course as you know older keyboards such as this did not come with RGB um, I can kind of understand of that choice I would have liked to see, seen it on this because um, I think that I know LEDs came out and became more popular later on but I almost feel like it's a part of of the, that that uh, aesthetic but that's just my opinion all right so now I know we're gonna need to I'm gonna put down the pads and I got some boron pads that came with that kit of screw and stabilizers nice and soft just gonna see where they are as long as they're not covering the hole I always get them a little bit off this, my eyesight isn't as good as it used to be, but as long as it's not covering the hole, it should take care of that. We have the pads installed, so now let's go and get the IXPE sheet. So they just, I don't know if it's to keep it down. Huh. That might affect the tolerances. I'm not sure why that's there. My instincts tell me to just cut it. So now we can see how everything lines up. Oh. Yeah, there's the center post. There is the hole for the ribbon cable. All right, so now that we've got that down, we can go ahead and start installing the uh, stabilizers. gaskets on here. I'm pretty sure these are them and that's where they go. Alright, we've got the gaskets on there. Next I think we're going to go ahead and put on the rest of the foam, the plate, and the switches. You guys didn't miss me, but I've been away for a minute. Um, I thought I had broken some toes. I dropped a heavy piece of furniture on them, and they were very angry. But they're better now, so <laughs> let me get back to this. So since I'm using the switches as anchors, I'm just going to go around the uh, perimeter of the board first, supporting the sockets, and then I'll start filling it in as I go. So we've got the plate and the PCB assembly all put together. I'm, I'm hopeful for a good sound. The combination of the plate, the foam, and the PCB with these switches is actually sounding pretty good, but we're gonna have to see what happens once we go ahead and put this in here. So now, now I'm gonna make some room <laughs> and put this aside in a place where it will not get damaged. Put that there for right now. And now, let's open this. I mean, this thing is a beast. Let me see. Wow. Almost 3.3 kilograms. <laughs> wow. That's um, that's 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 a heavy boy. That is uh, probably the heaviest keyboard I've built. I, I I think, yeah. By far, it's probably the key, heaviest keyboard I've built so far. All right, now we're going to remove the case screws. Oh, something bit me. A 
since I already have it flipped upside down, I figure this is probably the best time to go ahead and install the feet. Oh, here they are. Since I don't have any keys on there, so it's not going to be oh, cockeyed, uh, we can go ahead and add the bump on feet. All right. We've got the feet on there. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over, holding both the pieces together. And now... All right, it looks like we have some more spots for gaskets. So, I wonder... I put the gaskets onto the plate itself, but this has the layouts for the gaskets to be... I think on the case again not having an instruction manual I mean or at least a little guide at least you know one piece of paper make sure to check this make sure to check that um, that would have been a nice uh, feature so here we have the controller for looks like we've got a buzzer and a solenoid if I'm not mistaken so and this seems to be the connector for the daughter board which we also received yeah I guess we got a spare because that one's already been installed all right so how does the gasket fit in here if I do one is thicker than the other I'm gonna use the thicker piece and yeah, that looks right that goes underneath all right, so on most of the videos I'm seeing, they actually put the gaskets on the actual case. But because I saw a gasket written out on the plate, I just assumed that's where they went. It does seem to fit and work just fine. There's no flex cut, so it's not super bouncy, and I've got all of the, uh, the uh, foam in there, so... I, I don't get me wrong. I, I like gasket mount, but I still have tray mount keyboards that I use, and I I don't find them uncomfortable after coding all day. So, whereas it's almost become like a prerequisite, it has to have gasket or spring leaf or some sort of bouncy mount. I think that's that should be up to every individual uh, for them to decide, you know, what they like best because. I can use either one, no problem. But I mean, this will at least provide some flex. Obviously, if we were to take out the foams, we, we, which we will be coming back to and doing, because of the solenoid, I really want to do a foamless build with clickies in here and see what that sounds like. I think that will be make for an interesting sound test. But since these seem to be working just fine, I don't want to. I mean, I do have some spare gaskets that I could just use and mount directly to the plate but I just really don't fee don't see the uh, the reason to do it um, I do see screw holes here and I see screw holes here so I'm wondering if it has the option for a top mount I did not see that but it would make sense that I could just install the plate onto the top of the PCB and screw it in and have a top mount but that's something that we will look at when we come back to it. Right now, we're just getting the, the build done. So, as we've got this in place, obviously, we're not ready to close up yet because we do have the indicator. And we also have this badge that we could replace while we're here. But, because that means taking off. Nope. Let's go ahead and move this aside. foam now I do believe this entire thing is the weight because that's the, the screen that we can put right there I love these I almost want to well I do want to press them they're not buttons but they really seem like <laughs> a little tiny SNES control oh that was just on there with magnets I was not aware huh 
so I didn't have to take that off. Well, would have helped if I would have known that, but oh, I wonder if that's, that looks like that's where they go. Huh. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and install them over here. Yep. Right. Kind of like a force brake mod, but for the weight. So this uses regular Phillips head. So it's basically we're taking these magnet, these are magnet screws or magnetic screws, and we're just going to put them on the different plate. say I like that. Um, I wish I would have known before removing the inner weight, but hey, at least I learned something. So we've got that taken care of. Next is the badge. So I believe, let me see, these are the plate screws. These are the indicator light screws, all right? I am not a fan of these little sticky bags. I'd rather small Ziploc baggies, but that's just me. Alright. So it looks like I'm supposed to have three of these guys. And I've only got two. Because somehow... It looks like this goes through it. Yeah. Push it through. But there's only two. I've searched the floor. I've searched everywhere. I only saw two in there. So... I guess that must be a stock issue. So I'm going to put these caddy corner. I oh. really don't know what the issue was with these, but... Uh. Oh. These two pieces, but they're two pieces supposed to be together, no? Alright. So I'm going to go ahead... on, but I'm going to put these caddy corners so that, uh, which screw head do I use with this one? Oh, that's it. Alright, so. Alright, yeah, I, I just wanted to check back on the video. I, uh, because I recorded me opening it and just wanted to see if for some reason one rolled away, but that wasn't the case. It just was not in the bag. So I'm putting what I believe is the thinner piece of foam in there instead of the thicker one. It seems about twice the width of the, or almost seemed like the same thickness to be quite honest. But, and then we're gonna put down a PCB pad. Oh, but before I close, I almost forgot. We need to do the force brake mod. I have heard this without the force brake mod, and it does ring like a bell. So let's go ahead and prevent that by adding these very chonky force brake mods. And these are going to be going around the four screw points. All right, missing that bumper is may cause an issue. It should all tighten up once we put this down, but that's only a hope. All right. Yeah, there's very little flex, but again, we are using all of the foam. All right. So here should be the fun part. We have to make sure that we get through those. I believe these were this one. So I'm going to 
go ahead and do candy corner, not screwing all the way. Just make sure I can get them out. Do it catty corner just to make sure that everything is uh, lined up. Um, if you tighten one screw, it can be in, but it could offset all the other screws. So it's always good to make sure they're, you know, starting to dry, but don't tighten. That way, you still have a little bit of looseness to adjust. All right. Yeah, those pads are pretty thick. I thought there'd actually be some compression. But, I mean, that's a little space in the case. But again, I mean, those look like force brake mods to me. And it's not like they're two-layer. But even if they were, it's like, yeah, no, they're not two-layer. So, I don't know. That gap does not, to me, seem normal. Because... I don't think it should be gapped, but when I come back to it, I may replace them or just try some different brake mod uh, pieces that I have, like the Mons Geek ones. They work just fine. Granted, the case is not as heavy as this, but I think we should be fine. Now, for keycaps, I decided to go with... I hadn't heard of w, WU Keycap Studio or WKDS. W W-U-K-D-S. Um, until recently, I saw this keycap set and I reached out to them, but they didn't respond. It was during the holiday and I was like, screw it, I'm going to buy it. But then they were like, hey, you know, please, you know, review it and we'll give you a discount once you review some other ones. And I was going to re review them anyway, so I was like, sure, why not? This is the W-U-K-D-S or W-U Keyboard Design Studio. Um, and this is the 1970 set. So, um, let me see. This is... All right, so I got these in the KCA profile, but they're also available in a Cherry profile. And they also have a matching table mat. Um, and these are PBT DISA 1.5 millimeter thickness. I will be coming back to these to do a full pop proper review, but I just wanted to just go ahead and get these out there right now uh, the set does have what appears to be the to saying in the bottom row and because it's got that retro feel I thought it would be a perfect match for this keyboard definitely no pinging I'm just doing the stabilized keys real quick. Definitely, those that force break mod <laughs> definitely helps. Like I said, I saw videos without them doing that, just closing up the case, and it was a bit of a bell. But these actually sound pretty good. And here we are with the fully built MM Studio. Class 80 R2, and I gotta tell you, this thing is a beast. It definitely reminds me. <sighs> I'm I, I'm old. The colors of the keycaps remind me of fast food restaurants in the 70s. And yes, I was alive in the 70s. So do the math. Anyway, the the weight of the keyboard, the feel of the keyboard, um, and even the sound. It's nice and poppy. And we only have the IXPE sheet. I wonder what it's going to sound like when I decide to go ahead and add some PET in there as well. But for right now, 
as a stock keyboard with these um, e EF grayish, Gatoron EF grayish tactiles that, like I said, they have a, it, it's more, definitely more, you can feel it more than a brown, but it's not heavy by any means. I'd call it a light medium. For someone who wants that tactile feel, but wants a little bit more bump than a brown, but not as heavy as, say, like a U14, I think that this would be a good option. I do believe these are going to be selling quite inexpensively, 20-something cents a piece. So, But I'll include links down below. But with this combination, even though we're not dealing with the same off-white or beige or retro, it's still close enough that I like. The one thing that I, I don't know, just kind of makes me laugh, um, there's a scroll lock light. But where's the scroll lock button? That's why I assume this was like further up and it had those keys because, I mean, where's the scroll lock? I mean, usually it's what, page, break, pause, and scroll lock. But, so I'm not sure about that one. But let's go ahead and plug it in and see what we've got. All right. So I guess NumLock would only come on if I had another keyboard or a macro pad. But. be able to flip the switch and all right this is a solenoid I like this this is really nice so let's do the buzzer which should be in the middle That's the beat. That's the buzzer. I gotta say, I like that, but I think I like the solenoid best. <laughs> yeah, that's a. It's way more fun than a clicky, in my opinion. Way more fun. Um, I've gotta say, I um. Uh, I could see me annoying a lot of people with this keyboard because for me it's a lot of fun. It's not gonna it's not gonna bother me. It's actually gonna make me wanna type. Oh, I need to comment this code. Well, let me write a novel. <laughs> but I gotta say that But even without it, it's still a nice Fun. It's got just enough flex, but not so much that it's gonna. I mean, you can see the keys move, but it's not. It's not like typing on a trampoline or anything. So I, I've got to say, I I like this keyboard. Would have would I have added LEDs? Yes. Would I have moved this badge up here? Yes. I know that would have kind of shifted the design over, but I mean. It's, it's going to be long enough for pens anyway if you just would have shrunken this down to like right here with the pen holder, like right here. But that's just me. I still like the design. I'm just saying if I would have been designing it. Um, it's quite solid. It's, it's just a hunk, a hunk of metal. Um, I mean, what, roughly eight pounds? A little over? It's just... Um, <laughs> This is going on my desk, though. I'm afraid that my keyboard drawer may not be able to handle the weight. <laughs> that's, that's like, my only, like, concern with this keyboard. Like, will my keyboard tray handle the weight of an 8-pound keyboard? I want to say that it, it, was, it said that it was 15 pounds, but I don't remember. It's been so long since I installed that. Anyway, 
with the keycap, I like I said, I I know that the the retro is a little off. It's this is a little bit more beige-ish, uh, more yellowish, but I think it still looks perfect with these. I can think of several different keycap sets, um, like the MT3 sets. Uh, heck, I think even just the um, a, a black on white or a white on black would look good on this, even though the whites are going to be off. But I can think of several different sets that would look. Oh, I just thought of it. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's for when I come back to it. Um, right now, I need to, uh, I want to go ahead and finish this up. So I'm going to go ahead and do the sound test. I'm going to do it standard. And at the end, I'll turn on both the um, solenoid and the buzzer and just do a few taps there with the microphone so that you guys can hear. Um, I want to give my shout out again to uh, MM Studio for sending me out this keyboard for the build. I do apologize for there was a bit of a delay. Um, the winter weather has been a little screwier than usual and uh, we were left without power for a few days. So um, that and then what I thought was breaking my toes uh, earlier on in the filming of this video kind of uh, took me away from from everything for a little while. So uh, I did, it was a little bit of a, of a challenge. I will say this board, I think, uh, sells for 350. Actually, let me just make sure. All right, so yeah, this keyboard, and I thought I had, that's right, I thought I had selected WKL. Not, no big deal, but it would have been my first WKL. Um, it starts at 350 from, so this keyboard starts at 355 and it's in stock. Um, there is no group buy. You can go and purchase it right now. Now, 355 obviously is, is very pricey. Doesn't have the value. Almost. I honestly would have done a couple things differently, and at this price range, I mean, oh, well, I guess I should have looked at that. I only saw this. This card is so tiny. I'm used to getting cards that are literally the size of the keyboard. Um, this little card, I completely missed that it has assembly instructions, so <laughs> that is uh, my bad, but I don't know. I, I didn't see anywhere else where I could, um, I, I didn't see anything that clearly showed me, okay, here are the build instructions. So I actually now know the build instructions after. Oh, all right, I did this wrong. So that's what I get. Um, these, uh, the tabs I was calling the force break, they actually go on the plate top silicone pad. So, all right, well, looks like I'm going to have to come back to this and, <laughs> and correct that. Um, and then I'll probably just do my own force break mod, but... It still doesn't say top mount, the top silicone. Okay, so it does have a top mount. Oh, those pads are when you're doing top mount. Got it. Because usually there is a screw separator. That's what I was thinking. So, okay, so this does have a top mount. And you'd use those as the pads for between the screws and plates. And that's where we'd use those plate screws. Gotcha. All right. All right. Now that's making a lot more sense. I got to tell you. So screws that I thought were for keeping the plate together are actually for doing a top mount. So I've set that aside. So when I come back to it, I will remove those and I will um, put them in the right place and do a top mount. Um, there's only four pages of the build guide, so it doesn't really... It's only four pages of the build guide, so it doesn't necessarily cover everything. There's still a few questions that I would have had. Um, for the price this keyboard I would I would expect to have a an actual printed guide I mean a book yes I I, I like paper um, because I mean you get 
manuals for cheap keyboards just on how to use them. This is a machine that despite me having built many dozens of keyboards, I actually got some things wrong along the way. Um, so a guide, I mean, the, the QK series, the MKC series, they all come with actual paper guides, not only a list of all the parts, which I would have seen that I was missing one of those little rubber pieces for the, um, the indicator lights, but I think that, you know, just a QR code that wasn't very clear. I didn't even think to flip this over because I mean, half of it's in Chinese and I did look at this, but never did I think to just do that. Um, I just thought it was, okay, this is what's included. I mean, at least a bigger sheet of paper if you want to do a QR code, but I mean, I'm paying $355. Well, I mean, obviously, I, I didn't pay $355, but if I'm a customer and I paid that much and I don't get a guide, plus I'm missing a part, which is like, there should be at least, I mean, at this price, I think they can afford to put extras of everything. I mean, at least, you know, you got eight screws, then eight extras. And you need six pads, then... 12 extra. I mean, there's more than enough room, I think, to add these few little things, and it wouldn't have taken away much, if at all, from, from their margin. So I kind of I kind of question that, but I mean, I have never designed a keyboard. I've designed software, so it's completely different. So this is just my opinion and my thoughts on it. Do I like how it sounds? Yes. Do I like how it feels? Yes. Am I going to use this? Yes. Am I going to come back to it? Yes. Am I going to mod it? Heck yes. Uh, I'm definitely going to do a tape mod to it. Um, I'm going to try foam this build. I'm going to also try a build with um, uh, with a PET layer and some different keycaps, some taller keycaps, some cherry keycaps. I usually try to stick with cherry, but I, I was holding on to this set specifically for this keyboard because it's such a, it's a gem to me, honestly. I mean, despite these little things there, um, I, I like it. Now, I would have liked to gotten the WKL because I still don't have a WKL. So one of these days, I'll have a WKL. <laughs> I've got an HHKB, not an original one, but similar on its way. So really, the WKL is the only thing, only keyboard on my list that I still don't, don't have. Um, so I'm hoping to get one soon. But like I said, this starts at 355 you have the option for a wired hot swap PCB, wired solder PCB, or wired EC PCB. Um, it actually has the electrocapacitive domes. It's almost like a topper, but you actually install the switches. It looks like a lot of work, but it definitely looks like it provides that full user experience. So yeah, I gotta say, this is, um, this is a lovely build that I'm definitely going to be coming back to. Um, and doing a number of videos probably because I definitely need to uh, replace the um, what I thought was the <laughs> um, force brake mod it's actually for the top mount so I definitely am interested to see the difference hear the difference on a top mount as opposed to the current um, gaskets are actually on the on the PCB, so I could also go plateless with this. But I'm also curious to find out what it sounds like with um, PET plastic. So, and different, like I said, I, I usually I'm aiming to do Cherry um, Profile as the, the first sound test I do on a keyboard, but this one I just I couldn't pass up. And it's KCA, it's not... I mean, it's, it's sculpted, so it's going to be slightly different, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a difference. I think you'll be able to get a general idea of what it sounds like. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed building it. If you have any questions about this or anything that you'd like to see me do when I do come back to it, uh, please put in the comments down below. After actually finding the build instruction manual, though it's only four pages, I do wish that it was a little bit more complete but at least I did find out that these are not force break mod <laughs> these are pads that go when you do a top mount they go onto the plate in between the plate and the top of the case because you can do a top mount on this so I went ahead and removed those yes that was quite a gap 
and I replaced them with these. These are force brake mod strips from a Monsky keyboard. And I put one along each one of the holes uh, for the top, for the bottom. And it is, it seems to work just as well. So um, I did do a sound test with the, uh, my mistaken assumption that these were force brakes. I should have known these things are pretty thick. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just do a regular sound test. I'm going to do a regular typing sound test and then a few seconds of both the buzzer and the solenoid um, at the end so that you guys can get an uh, idea for what it is. The buzzer and the solenoid, for some reason, don't activate with the shift keys, but I guess that makes sense because, I mean, you're usually using them in a combination. So, um, I've got to say, this is a solid hunk of keyboard, and um, I'm quite enjoying it. It's going to be my daily driver now for a little while. Who knows how long? I may keep it for a while. I do kind of wish that I had access to a macro pad that was at least similar. I'm sure there's something out there. I just got to look. Um, but this is definitely, I mean, you're getting a lot for what you paid for. Now, again, I would have liked to seen more comprehensive build guide. Uh, I would have liked it not to have, you know, been missing a piece. I mean, I appreciate the uh, extra daughter board, but I uh, I don't know why that little extra rubber gasket for the plate wasn't here. The weight of this keyboard, the way that it sounds, um, the feel of it, yes, not a lot of people are going to be able to afford it. It's, I mean, it's a price, it's a pricey investment, but in my opinion, it's an investment. Um, now, I did forget to mention the software. It is running on Vial. Uh, there is no QMK source to it. Via does detect it, but because Via and Vial use very similar protocols, it'll detect it, but there's no JSON file for it, so it doesn't do much after that. Um, I had made the assumption that this was up here, or you know, shift it, but I could see how that could affect the design. So you can either use keys here if you want, if you need some for macro, if you actually need the scroll lock or, you know, whatever keys you might like. But this obviously is reminiscent of the old 5150s. Granted, now this was, well, I mean, moved over to the top of the numpad so that you could actually have num lock, caps lock, scroll lock, because the only thing, I mean, if I have a macro pad, I'm going to guess the number lock key turns on, but unless I program a scroll lock key, I doubt that's going to come on. But that's that's neither here nor there. That's more aesthetics. Um, how solid this thing is, it's just, it's incredibly solid. I mean, it weighs, I mean, it it's so substantial. I mean, it's like, I remember I handed this to my wife and I did, I put my hand and I'm like, no, no, make sure that you got it. Make sure that you got it. And then she was, her hands, oh, I pushed this off. Her hands nearly dropped to the floor with it. Thankfully I had my hands underneath. She was, she was like, what is that? What's, what's in there? Is that made out of lead? I'm like, no, um, it, it definitely weighs more than, uh, the 5150s or the retro keyboards it's emulating. Um, I do know that they have a new one they're doing an IC check on and um, I want to read more into it because it actually looks like the cable goes inside the USB and I don't think that that's uh, in my opinion I don't think that's a great design decision but I want to read it more into it and see because it is uh, emulating another um, old school retro keyboard and as a kid of the 70s I just can't pass up that that aesthetic that retro aesthetic but I am honestly very pleased with the way it sounds with these um, EF grayish tactiles it's nice and poppy um, there's no real uh, case ping but again I use these to force break I have heard other sound tests that didn't use any sort of force break and um, 
they did have a bit of a ring to it so i guess it's not fully stock because i did these but i practically do that to any aluminum keyboard that's a two-piece because uh it's there to prevent the top case and the bottom case from resonating with every key press um so i completely enjoy this keyboard um, i like that it has the step caps lock option that is really the only optional layout uh, that you have except for well, I mean, obviously putting switches here i'd originally put in switches and thought that the cable went through where the switch was thankfully i didn't break the cable but um this was an it was an interesting build let me just say that there's a few things that i obviously got wrong um i did not see i didn't think to flip over the card and that's my mistake and see the qr code but i bought I've gotten other, um, you know, kits, and they come with, you know, a nice, like, a booklet, like a detailed picture booklet, or will have a big, you know, QR code, something that is not missable. You know, that little card, I don't even know where it is now. Uh, of course, see, I lost it. Oh, there it is. This, this card is so tiny that... Don't get me wrong, I think the keyboard is worth the price. I mean, it could be a little bit cheaper, but I think that it's a, like I said, I think it's an investment. I think this keyboard is going to last. I think it's well built um, and well designed. But this is a very tiny card that says what the contents are. Um, on any of my QK boards, it's usually a nice long sheet that has every item that it includes checked off, uh, and it has an actual, you know, sign off by uh, and someone that actually did some quality, you know, assurance uh, on it. So I would have liked to seen that, uh, though. Because I've built so many keyboards, I always try to go into it and see if I can figure it out on my own to see if there's any difficulty. So, obviously, there's certain things that are done a little bit differently on here. I kind of get it now that I've put everything together. Um, I was not aware that it was a top mount as well as a... I mean, it's, it's gasket mount, but I... And I probably did... I did put the, uh, the uh, gasket on the part of the PCB that said gasket, but... On every other build, I see that the gaskets have been placed on the actual case, though that does not seem to affect the uh, the flex. It is not crazy flexy, which is fine by me. I don't get me wrong. I like a nice flexy keyboard. I don't like trampoline, but I can also work just fine on a tray mounted. Um, I feel that there's a bit of a I don't know belief in the community that. You know, it, it has to be gasket mount or spring leaf mount. It has to have bounce. I, I don't think that's the case. I think it's another thing that's just preference. Um, so I can work with either. I, there's a couple keyboards that are tray mount that I still cycle through. Um, and almost every day I go, okay, what keyboard should I use today? <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the sound test of this keyboard but with it properly built again after the normal sound test there will be a few seconds of i'll switch between the buzzer and uh, the switches it's not the easiest to do from looking up but i'll switch between the regular the solenoid and the buzzer so that you guys can hear the difference um but i am going to be coming back to this in the near future i i want to try Want to try foamless with clickies and see what that sounds like? Clickies and the solenoid turned on. That should be interesting. Um, but I'm also interested in doing uh, the pet mod, uh, the Tempest tape mod, and maybe a couple other things to see what kind of different sounds I can get out of this. Because, I mean, that's a substantial case. There's a lot of space in there um, to either leave it empty or to put different materials in there, say polyfill, kill mat you know, whatever, and see what kind of tones we can get out of this, because I, I get the impression that we could probably get some really clacky tones, well, it's kind of a clacky build right now, but I think we can also reach some deep tones because of the the massiveness, the, the substantiality of this case. So, 
I hope that you guys enjoyed the build video. If you have any questions, any suggestions for when I come back to it, please drop them below in the comments. I do my best to get to every comment. Um, let's get a conversation going. But for now, I'll leave you guys with the sound test, the almost stock, except for the force break, of the MM Studio Class 80 R2, which is currently in stock at MM Studio, and I'll include a link down below. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.